All right, Jazakallah Khair, uh, Imam Rafiz, I said, uh, some of the great advices he gave that we have to be, uh, we, the best way to give the dawah is the dawah by amal and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And especially where we are living in and the time we are living in, it is very important that we take that advice into practice and implement it in our lives. So that was a great advice from Imam Nafiz. Jazakallah Khair, Imam Nafiz. Our second speaker uh, is a new speaker to this masjid, I, I think. Uh, I think we need uh, his first time. So he needs a little introduction. So I will try my best to introduce him. Um, Sheikh Hussam Hilal, he was born in Egypt and uh, he, wa he was from a religious family and then uh, his father was uh, an instructor in Al-Azhar and then uh, he moved to Canada in 2002 and then he went to school and then he did his uh, undergrad from uh, University of Toronto in Life Science. Then he, uh, he did his HIFS uh, at the age of eight. So that was his great achievement. And then uh, after that, he, he wanted to become a doctor, but at some point, he, he decided that he wanted to do the, do the khidmah of uh, this deen. And then he switched it, and he became an imam. And later, uh, he took uh, a position in ISNA. So he's part of a ISNA family. And uh, uh, he's part of a ISNA family. And, uh, He's a great young speaker in this area, and uh, he, he inspired a lot of youth. And uh, I, would, I think you all will be inspired by his speeches today, inshallah. So uh, with a great request, I would uh, request Sheikh Hussam to enlighten us with his young and energetic talk, inshallah. Astaghfirullah. What am I supposed to say after that? <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So I'm going to put this here, inshallah. After your permission, I always like to uh, begin just with a brief recitation of the Qur'an so we can get into the right heart of state or the state of heart. It's been a long night. State of heart, inshallah, and also the right state of mind. <clears throat> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام 
السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم My brothers my sisters if you look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the poets said about him كان صلى الله عليه وسلم Always the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went through constant perpetual struggles but always da'im at tabassum he always maintained the smile he always had a positive attitude through these difficult struggles and my brother my sister there are two ayat that I'm going to focus on for tonight's discussion very briefly from Surah Al-Fajr two ayat from Surah Al-Fajr that we're going to focus on and how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life and the Prophet's lives and the Messenger's lives depict that. And those two ayat فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا It's an amazing thing, an amazing phenomena that the human being has. When good happens, when Allah is generous, when Allah is giving and giving and giving, things are going your way, everything you touch is gold, what happens? The human being begins to say, oh, look at me, I got this. Look at these hands. These hands, I, I, I got this, this is my work, my effort, everything is going my way and begins to assume if everything is going my way, if life is great, if everything is great, that means Allah is pleased with me. And if things are not going my way, something is wrong with my relationship with Allah. These are two assumptions that the Arabs and people generally have even till this day. Let me give you a few examples. The Arabs said, لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ If only this Qur'an was revealed to two of the great, one of the great men from the two cities, or a man that is popular in both cities. And some narrators or some commentators, they say that this possibly could refer to someone like Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira. Why? Because he has land that extended from Mecca all the way to Al-Ta'if. He was popular with the people of Mecca, popular with the people of Ta'if. He had 10 kids, he used to walk with five on the right, five on the left in the city of Mecca. Look what I got, I got the money, I got the family, I got the kids, I got everything, everything is going my way. Therefore, the gods must be pleased. Therefore, Allah must be pleased. That's what they said. So the Arabs were like, why does it have to be delivered, this revelation, this final testament, why does it have to be given to an orphan? An orphan, yes, he's from Quraysh, but he's still an orphan. He's not wealthy, he's got nothing. Why him? Why couldn't it be given to someone of power? Because it's easier to succumb, to listen, to follow, to respect someone who's got power. Right? That's one example. What are other examples? Who can give me an example? Any of you guys? Let's make this a little bit more interactive. May Allah bless you. I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you can give me an example from the Qur'an or from the seerah that shows this. Anybody else, especially the young guys. The young guys are looking at me like, don't do this, Shaykh. Please, don't do this to us. It's late already, it's been a long day. Anybody? Okay, khair, inshallah. Look, my brothers, my sisters, at a few other examples in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us, for example, that human beings have two kinds of attitudes when it comes to this. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these two ayat says kalla balla tukrimun al-yateem wa la tahadun ala ta'am al-miskeen and the whole theme of the surah is breaking these misconceptions that Quraysh has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us other examples in the Quran look at Qarun Qarun he says when people came to him and said look at what you've got فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فِي زِينَتِهِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ أُولِي الْقُوَّةِ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا When his people saw him dressed in the most beautiful of garments, he's got the best, he's got connections to Fir'aun now. Because Fir'aun now, he, you know, he needs the economic power. Even though he's from Banu Israel, Fir'aun brings him close. Even though he's a minority, he brings him close because of that power, because of that money. Because money is important for those people. Money is power. Money is, again, authority. So Qarun is brought close to Fir'aun because of the money that he's got. And Qarun, when he has all of this, what does he say? When people tell him, hold on, don't let this get to your head. Stay humble, stay grounded. He says, what are you talking about? What do you mean give out of it? What do you mean invest from what Allah has given me? No, innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. This is because of the knowledge that I had. I'm smart. I did this. This is my accounting, my business strategization. This is my management. This is my, my purchases, my selling, my work. This is me. Don't attribute to this by anybody else. Look at Fir'aun. What does Fir'aun say? Ana rabbukum al-a'la. I am your highest Lord. مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى وَمَا أَهْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ I don't, you don't see anything except what I see. This is the highest sense of, again, dictatorship. Your opinions are my opinions. You don't get to believe in anything except if I deem it correct, authentic. Why? Because I got the power. Right? وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي أَمْ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ هَذَا الَّذِي هُوَ مَهِينٌ وَلَا يَكَادُ يُبِينٌ like, do you, do you not really, look, look at this Musa guy. Who is this Musa guy? Maheen, weak, unnoticeable, doesn't have any significance to him. It's as though like, he doesn't even, he doesn't even stand out. It's as though he's a little thing, a little speck, a little, doesn't, doesn't have any significance. But look at me, I got the rivers under my castle. Right? The people of Ad. Why? Why did they, you know, commit such injustice? Why did they transgress? Because look, we've, we've built these castles out of gold. We cultivated the mountains, the people of Thamud, we did this. Isn't it amazing that Fir'aun says, look at these rivers underneath me. Imagine he built his castle upon rivers, waters, channels of water. What's his destruction? How does he get destroyed? He gets drowned by that water. Qarun elevates himself above people. How does he get destroyed? The people of Ad, the people of Thamud, especially the people of Thamud, when they elevated themselves upon, above the mountains and built those, you know, when they built those tall towers, right? The city, the wind came so strong and destroyed everything they've got. They built themselves like, look, we reached the air. Look at that, look at the heights. Boom, the air comes and destroys them. Allah sends punishments very similar in nature to the crime. But look at the Prophet Muhammad's attitude throughout his life. When he was poor, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى He was poor. He was a nobody. He was sitting with the companions and he told them, a prophet or prophets that have been sent before me, all of them served for some part of their lives as shepherds. Even you, Ya Rasulullah, even me, I used to serve as a shepherd for portions of a dinar. Little money, little pennies in modern context. Even you, Ya Rasulullah, even me. How was he in that attitude when he had nothing? How was he? Who was he when he had nothing? He was al sadiq al amin The most honest, the most trustworthy. When he had nothing, he was an exemplar to everybody around him. He was so good. Listen to this, guys. Listen to this. Subhanallah. This is your, your Rasul. 
لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم. What a beautiful ayah from Surah At-Tawbah. You know how he was? He was so generous, so loving, so loyal, so dutiful that everybody started speaking about his honesty. We all know this. But imagine a woman named Khadija. I want you to imagine with me. A woman named Khadija in a society that buries women alive out of shame. Social austerity at its best. How is she reacting to this man? She made a name for herself. She became a businesswoman, one of the richest merchants in a society that buries women alive and strips them of their rights. She made a name for herself. She was beautiful. She was wealthy. She was powerful. And she herself proposes to this man in the most modest of ways. And he consults his family and his family says, go ahead. She's unmatched a woman like no other woman. And he marries her and the night or early on in their marriage, she comes to him and she says, my cousin, my wealth is yours. My property is yours. All that I have is yours. My business is yours because I have not come across anyone more trustworthy than you. And I have not come across anyone smarter than you. I trust you with what I have worked on for all these years more than I trust myself. Imagine that. She gives everything to him. And this teaches us just a side tangent here. If you learn to get your wife to love you for your character, wallahi, your wife will give everything she has, her whole heart for you. But if you seek to dominate and strip Again, power through yelling and... No, it's not going to happen. Respect is earned, not forced and coerced. So imagine this. Now what happens when he's rich? Now he gets to interact with Abu Bakr and Uthman, merchants now in the city. He's now on a different level, social strata. You know, when you're cool, when you got the money, you know, the people you see, it, everything changes. Your, your environment changes, but does it affect who he is? It doesn't affect who he is. He gives, he invests, he spends, and Khadija becomes that again, first sponsor of da'wah. The first sponsor of da'wah of our deen is a woman. Imagine that. And during his wealth, he invests, invests for the sake of Allah. And he gets friends that have the same kind of attitude. Abu Bakr builds the masjid in Medina buys it, even though it belonged to orphans. And the people of Medina told him, take it, you don't have to get anything for it. Abu Bakr and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, no, we're gonna pay for it, why? Because we want this to be in our book of deeds. And Abu Bakr is responsible for that. Imagine everybody that goes there, prays there, the ajr for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Abu Bakr, the closest companions. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was poor, he was rich. Then what happened after he was rich? When he started teaching Islam and teaching the Quran, what did they tell him? Oh, this is not going to happen. They tried from every angle, tried to seduce him with power, seduce him with kingship, with women, with wealth. No, none of it. Rabbi Allah, my duty is towards Allah and Allah alone. So they take away everything. Let's put po political pressure. Let's put economic pressure. Let's boycott them. Let's do this. Let's do that. So now he, wa he was rich and now he's poor again. Nothing. He's kicked out of his own home. When he went back during the Fath, his home was gone. His home was gone. His wealth was gone. His business froze. Food for 16 months, a year and a half. Nothing in the house of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, except the two dark things. What are the two dark things? The Arabs have this thing linguistically where they would call two things based on the characteristic or the attribute of one of them. So dates are dark usually, but water is colorless. But they call dates and water as sawdan, the two dark things based on the attribute of one. That's why they call the, the sun and the moon al-qamaran, the two moons. This is one of the things, you know, linguistically they did. So the only thing that he had, just in case you come across it, dates and water for a year and a half. How did he react during those moments? My Lord has neglected me. My Lord has done this. My Lord has no. 
Rabbi Allah. I'm going to get through this. When he went to Medina, he was poor the first few while, and then richness came, abundance came, and Umar walked and said, Ya Rasulullah, the king of this and the leader of that, look at the Byzantine Empire, look at the Persians, look at the Sassanini, everybody. The rulers are so well treated, they sleep on comfortable beddings, and here you are sleeping on the hasir, which is basically again, the bedding that is so hard, made out of the palm leaves and the palm branches, leaving marks on the beloved face or the beloved back of the Prophet Muhammad And in a hadith, this hadith is weak, but I'm sharing it because of the phrasing. أَنَا أَجْلِسُ كَالْعَبْدِي وَأَأْكُلُ كَالْعَبْدِي فَأَنَا عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ and there are variations of this hadith that are stronger. But the meaning is I will sit like a slave and I will eat like a slave because I am a slave to Allah. This was his attitude towards his life. He buried all of his children except one, Rabbi Allah. He buried his companions in Uhud, Rabbi Allah. Alhamdulillah. They suffered defeat, partial defeat in Uhud. Here and there. إِنْ يَمْسَسْكُمْ قَرْحٌ فَقَدْ مَسَّ الْقَوْمَ قَرْحٌ مِثْلُ وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نَذَوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ This was his attitude. رَبِّي اللَّهِ Through all of it. Wealth, sickness, fatigue, hunger, tired. All of it. رَبِّي اللَّهِ And my brother and my sister coming back two ayat. Allah will test all of us. Listen to this carefully brothers. Allah will test all of us here in this room. We're being tested as we speak. I am being tested as I speak to you now. Everybody, every speaker's intention is tested. Our commitment is tested. We're all tested in so many ways. You will be tested in yourselves, in your wealth. In your wealth and in yourselves, in your souls. And you will hear so much that will disappoint you, that will hurt you, that will leave you displeased. But if you are going to be patient through it all, firm, and you're going to hold on and not succumb to the pressure, not weaken. That is what determines real success at the end of the day. Let me give you a few examples and I'll wrap up with this, my brother, my sister. Allah gives and tests. Look at Dawood. Who was Dawood? Who was Dawood? Dawood was a nobody. But he defeated Jalut. And Talut allowed Dawood to marry his daughter. Dawood went from being a nobody to being a king of his people by marrying the king's daughter. So he combined two things kingship and prophethood. But how, how did he react? And his son, Suleiman, Suleiman was born a king. Born in all of this pampered lifestyle. He was bo- tested with wealth. What did he say? I did it. It's mine. What did he say? What did he say? Right? Dhul Qarnayn. He had the power. What did he say? How did he react? What was his attitude? Ma makkanni fihi rabbi khayr. What else did he say? This is a mercy from my Lord. Whatever my Lord has given me is good. What did Sulaiman say? This is from the favor of my Lord. This is my Lord's work. It's not my work. And in this he will test whether I'm grateful or whether I'm ungrateful. This is his attitude. As I have this wealth, as I'm looking at it, I'm looking at my hand, I'm looking at my strength, I'm looking at my free time, I'm looking at everything I have. This is my test. How am I going to use what Allah has given me? You know, we're all born different. We're all born different. Allah creates us unique and different. But Allah's justice is so profound in the way that He gives. 
He may give you wealth. He may give you health. He may give you, you know, appeal. He may give you charisma. He may give you eloquence. He may give you knowledge. He may give you patience. He may give you that. He may give. Everybody is given such an intricate formula that makes us all, if you look at the end and the overall picture, equal in our availability and our potential to be close to Him. But we're all different in those unique characteristics and attributes. Look at Ayyub. He was tested on the other hand. Just closer up. Put it up, inshallah. Okay. No problem. So look at Ayyub, for example. Ayyub, he was a prophet, generous, wealthy, knowledgeable, respected, loved, admired by everybody around him. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to Shaytan that you will not have any control over my righteous, chosen, favored servants. Sultan. Except those who follow you from the Gawin. So Shaitan looks at this servant, so committed to Allah, says to Allah, give me one chance to try to tempt him. All of the people around him are praising him. I will try to break him. Give me the chance. Look at Iblis. He still asks Allah for permission. Can't do anything. Can't act on his behalf. Don't blame things on shaitan. Don't blame things on hasad. Don't blame things on black magic. My marriage is not working because I'm affected by hasad, brother. No, your marriage is not working because you need to put more effort. Of course, sometimes there are things that are out of our control. But don't always be the play the victim. So shaitan here says, give me the opportunity to tempt him, to break him, to weaken him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom and knowledge prevails. Go ahead, you'll be proven wrong. Ayyub, what happened, alayhi salatu was salam, jazakallah khair for the reminder, Shaykh. Ayyub, alayhi salatu was salam, what happens? He goes out and his farms are all destroyed. His wealth is all gone. Alhamdulillah, he says. He goes out with one of his wives. This is back at a time when it was culturally appropriate to have multiple wives. He goes out with his wife, one of his wives, and leaves the rest of his wives and children in the house, beautiful house. Something happens, the house crashes or collapses, everybody inside dies. Can you imagine coming back home and now only him and his wife are alive. All of his kids are gone. And he says, what? Alhamdulillah. It hurts, like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says. Muslims are not supposed to be cold and emotionless. It hurts, it affects him. The eye does tear, and the heart does feel sorrow. We feel pain, of course, we're hurt. But we don't say anything except what pleases our Lord, even in these most difficult times. Because shaitan will use those emotional times, those moments of sadness, moments of sorrow, moments of struggle, moments of anger. But those who have sincere, true belief in Allah don't shake. They don't shake. He says, Alhamdulillah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His will, Iblis, uh, Ayyub alayhi salam is tested again. How? Ayyub is tested with his health. Shaitan is like, one more chance, I can break him. So Ayyub develops this skin disorder, discoloration, depigmentation. And it affects him. Everybody says hey, it's, this is contagious. Everybody starts isolating him. The same people that used to love Ayyub for the things he did for them now turn away from him. This is the test for the people who give, provide, and care. If they're doing it for people at this moment, they would stop. But if they're doing it for Allah, it doesn't matter how the people react. This is his test. And everybody's tested based on their tolerance and ability to handle. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا ما أتاها لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Whatever Allah has given you, whatever you have right now, your responsibilities, your duties, your commitments, your expectations, all of them, you can do them. Because Allah is not going to put you in any situation that you can't handle. Allah is not going to put you in a situation that you cannot bear. That's what we have to remember as a Muslim, as a Muslimah. So Ayyub now, he is ostracized in the community, isolated, made to feel alone. 
What does he do? Alhamdulillah. His wife, she goes into the market, she cuts her hair, makes it into a rope because she doesn't want to beg. She sells it for a piece of bread that she brings to her husband. And he tells her, you didn't have to do this. For me, you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to compromise your femininity for this. And he says, Alhamdulillah. Through all of this. Then he turns to Allah. وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ رَبِّ إِنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Oh Allah, look at that. He doesn't say, what's happening to me? What's going on? Nothing. Ya Allah, I have been touched by distress. And you are the most merciful of all those who have mercy. Continually merciful. فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَذِكْرَى لِلْعَابِدِينَ وإسماعيل وإدريس وذا الكفل كل من الصابرين وأدخلناهم في رحمتنا إنهم من الصالحين وذنون وذنون إذ ذهب مغاضبا فظن أن لن نقدر فظن أن لن نقدر عليه فنادى فنادى في الظلمات أن لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين فاستجبنا له ونجيناه من الغم وكذلك ننجي المؤمنين وزكريا وزكريا إذ نادى ربه رب لا تذرني فردا وأنت خير الوارثين فاستجبنا له ووهبنا له يحيى وأصلحنا له زوجه إنهم كانوا كانوا يسارعون في الخيرات ويدعوننا رغبا ورهبا وكانوا لنا خاشعين All the prophets, all the messengers The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says that human being will be tested based on how close he is to Allah. And Allah tests those who are closest to Allah. My brothers, my sisters, when Allah wills for someone to be brought close, He breaks them, because that's how we build, that's how we become strong. You go to the gym, you gotta break those muscles. You gotta tear those muscles to make them stronger. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting you through these tests, when you look and wonder what's happening in Burma, when you look and wonder what's happening in, 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 in Suriya, when you look and wonder what's happening in our world, what's happening locally, when you're wondering what's going on, the ummah is breaking. But your attitude in this, in your own individual difficulties, in your community's difficulties, that's what's going to either determine that you get the edge through this and you come out successful, or you come out having lost the dunya and the akhirah. Have good expectation of Allah. Interpret everything that happens in your life with husn al with good thoughts about Allah. This is what the Prophet Muhammad told us, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ What a wonderful thing, the attitude of this believer. What a wonderful thing. When good happens, alhamdulillah. When bad happens, alhamdulillah. Patience in good, patience in difficulty. This is the attitude of the mu'min. This is the attitude of the believer. This should be your attitude. This should be our attitude. Don't attribute the good to yourself, summarizing. Don't attribute the bad, 
Say Alhamdulillah, don't attribute the bad to Allah, don't attribute the good to yourself. Say Alhamdulillah through thick and thin and turn every challenge that Allah has given you into an opportunity for your head to bow down and for your heart to be humbled and for you to prostrate in the sujood to be brought closer to Him. And when Ahmed ibn Hanbal was asked, when do we finally get to rest? He says, when you set your first foot in Jannah, the human being is created in difficulty and he or she will go to the dunya. This is the abode of testing, the abode of difficulty. And I leave you with one thing on a good note. This is the last thing, inshallah, I promise. Forgive me for going over time. Abdullah ibn Zubair. One night or one day, it started raining heavily in Mecca. The water rose because, you know, back then the Kaaba was inclining. It was on a hill down. And because it was on a hill downward, when the water flooded, the whole area was basically full of water. So everybody, for the most part, stopped doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Abdullah ibn Zubair said, no, and this is an authentic, actually, story. He said, not me. I'm not going to let this water stop me. And he said, I want to be the first to swim around the Kaaba. So he did his tawaf swimming around the Kaaba. This is how a Muslim looks at challenges. Not as an obstacle, not as a reason to stop, but as a reason to start something new. To make something beautiful. To be the first to lead by example. Because when it takes one brave person to do it, everybody else says, hey, if that person is due, I can do it too. So you get the edge of everybody else that does it. We live in difficult times, of course. But every era, every time in the ummah has had difficulties. We say Alhamdulillah. And we don't give up on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we keep fighting, we keep staying strong, we keep persisting, we keep holding on. May Allah reward you, bless you, and give you all Jannah al-Firdaus. I thank you for the opportunity to speak here before you tonight. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He gathered us in this nice beautiful masjid it's my first time seeing it to gather us in Jannah al firdaus imagine how beautiful that would be and as I'm in the sight and the company of these beautiful shaykh mashallah tabarakallah imagine what it's like to see the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu face and imagine having the opportunity to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah give you Jannah al firdaus subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruk wa natubu alaykum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh